God bless you. Thank you so much for being here. Um, Thank you. Guys, before we let you know who the guest is, um, we are very grateful to God for being here. We are very grateful to God for allowing us this chance to always come, um, you know, and share our testimonies and share our stories in, um, in an attempt to destigmatize cancer and to be able to encourage those that are walking the journeys of cancer right now and to be able to remind people that um, doctors treat but we have a sovereign God that heals. And so this morning we are so privileged to have a young lady um, to share with us a story that everybody here wants to hear. All of you want to hear this story. I've had a bit of it and I really am yearning to hear more of it. Uh, but mm -hmm. before we get into it, let us thank God for the day today. Father, thank you so much for this wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, oh Father. Thank you for the gift of life and thank you for provisions. Thank you for friendship and thank you for wisdom and knowledge, oh God. This time as we sit here to testify, Jehovah, because the Bible says that we defeat the enemy through the words of our testimony. As we sit here to testify, as faith sits here to encourage us, and to give us a glimpse into her life, my Lord and my Savior, I ask you to open our inner ears of understanding, to open our ears to get to know what to take, oh Father, because what to take is what matters here, oh God. I bless you for her, I bless you for her family, I bless you for her wonderful, wonderful babies. Thank you for those blessings we are going to hear about today. We bless you for Doreen who worked so hard to make this happen. Oh Father, thank you for everybody who sacrifices. This is sacrifice. Thank you for all the guests who understand the reason why we do what we do. Oh God, we bless you and we worship you. For we pray only believing and trusting in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I know most of you know me, but many people normally come here for the first time and they encounter me for the first time and they're like, ooh, what is happening? Which alien is this? <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is how I come alive when I'm home and mostly when I'm talking cancer because it, there's a way mm -hmm. which it brings seriousness to people and it helps the fear to go down because uh -huh. they see me and they're afraid. They're like, what am I seeing? Some of them ask me, is it an alien? Are you transitioning? Yes. Are you all yes. those questions, you know? But I get it. <laughs> yeah. Hear what it's about, then they pay attention. So it's very important. Guys, my name is Diana Awar. Candy Diana, of course, is just my brand name. I'm a breast cancer thriver. I call myself a thriver because for me when I'm branded a survivor it looks like I survived something the first time and it's coming back for me you know um, and I don't want to have that in mind I just want to know I'm thriving and I'm living today not caring about tomorrow because the Bible says tomorrow will take care of itself and so that's who I am and we meet here oftentimes to just share about our experiences, what made us go through, what we, we did go through, just for it to encourage somebody or people who have just been told you have cancer. Mm -hmm. And they don't think, they don't think they can make it from there. Now Faith, can you yes. tell us about who is Faith? And when so, and how, what led to those three words being told to her, you have cancer? So, uh, Faith is uh, a simple girl, born and raised in the village. I, I actually call myself a poor child, a poor child who has been raised by the grace of God. God has been so gracious to me ever since I was a child because I never uh, had a privilege to be raised by both parents. I actually lost my parents at a very, very tender age. I think I was around 10 years old and uh, my sister had to take over. So it's, I call my sister, my father, my everything, my mother, my everything. So I was raised by my sister. She managed to actually, she actually got married with the five of us. We were seven in our family and only two had actually completed from four by the time my parents were passing away. So uh, my sister had to get married with the five of us 
and it's just so incredible she's a strong woman and she made sure at least each and every one of us went up to university level and so uh when i say um and i'm an epitome of grace ever since i was a kid until now i'm carried by grace each and every day amen, amen. faith is a, a triplets mom and a mother a mother of four for that case in that yeah a wife to a very loving husband supportive yeah amen i thank god for your sister i thank god mm -hmm. when, when when people normally hear about siblings doing what they do i remember my sister coming to take care of me here living at three kids back home in kenya and people could ask especially people of different culture and different nations how could your sister leave her kids to to come and i say when you're blessed with the love of siblings that's, a, that's a major kind of love because some people don't experience that in their families i thank god for your yes. sister now if you lead yes. us quickly to why we are here what happened wow what led to now, that? Uh, any symptoms what led to the three words you have cancer and what type of cancer now uh i was a very active child and a teenager for that matter and actually used to play football in school so immediately after form four i start feeling like i have a burning sensation in the legs and when i walk for a long distance i feel like i'm getting so tired uh and a number of times I would take my legs and dip them in very cold water to just get that much relief that I needed. So at that time, I didn't actually know uh, why I, why all that was happening. So uh, I take some painkillers and just put my legs in cold water to get that relief. And it went on and on and on for like two years. So after two years now, I start walking from one hospital to another, one hospital to another, and it was a whole hell of misdiagnosis. So at a point, it's malaria because I was, the symptoms I had actually were joint pains. And you know, when, when, when you walk into a, a hospital and you tell a doctor that I have joint pains, I have headache, I have, uh, I'm feeling nauseated. I, you know, it's malaria related. So the doctor would be like, you know, a number of times malaria doesn't show in some people. So as long as, as much as you, the test has shown negative, but you still have all these symptoms, then you could just be that patient whom malaria doesn't show on the test. So just take the malaria tabs and go and take for some time. And actually I'll go home with the malaria tabs and I'll take them and I would feel much relief and I'm like, oh, so malaria keeps on coming all the time. So that time now we treat malaria and I feel okay, but now it's not, it, it's short lived. Two weeks again, I'm back to the hospital. Now this time round, I go to a different clinic and I'm like, now let me not just go to a general doctor. Let me walk into a clinic and do a blood test and do some other things. So this time round, now I'm diagnosed with arthritis. Reason, I'm saying I have leg pains mm. and it was actually pains in the hip, in the pelvic bones. So I would feel like shooting pains in the pelvic bones. And when I'm walking, at times I would just limp and I stop immediately. I can't just walk any further. Mm -hmm. So when I walk, I walk into a clinic, they would tell me that could be arthritis. So I'm put on arthritis drugs again. You know, so you know, uh, what's funny is the way doctors say that could be malaria that could be arthritis as in they're just yes, yes. doing their probabilities without thinking of <laughs> scan scan let's check for yes. other major culprits without yes. dwelling on so, the smaller culprits 
Yes. So by the time we were coming to taking a scan, it was like that it it has taken so long, so long, like around now four years. That is now when one day I was walking and I just broke down. I couldn't walk anymore because now this time round I would start feeling like a swelling in the breast, like I'm swelling in the breast. I'm swelling, like I would wake up one morning and I'm feeling like my eyes swollen, the breast is swollen, the nodes are swollen, the, like this side on the head, like my hand is swollen, my thumb is swollen, like every day it was an exchange. So now I tell my sister, now I guess it's time now we will have to see a, a specialist in yeah. that case. Yeah. And I had actually left my sister's house because I had just graduated, so I had moved to Nairobi. So one evening I feel like I can't walk anymore. And then she calls me and tells me, tomorrow wake up very early in the morning and go see a, a doctor. Yeah. So I walk into a clinic in Nairobi and then uh, when, I, when I explained everything, like how I was feeling, the doctor told me, Faith, you need to act with immense speed. So he tells me, go and uh, do an x-ray. So when I went and did an x-ray, actually that is when I came back and he was like, whom do you have around? He told her I'm with my sister. And then he tells me, I'm referring you to Nairobi West Hospital. Go there and do an, a CT scan. So I go to Nairobi West Hospital I do a CT scan, bring back the results, and he was like, Faith, you need not to continue wasting time because you have a tumor on your pelvic bone. You know, this is interesting. Let me ask you, the other, that you, the other hospitals that you used to go to, the, 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 the place where they talked of malaria and arthritis, were those also within the capital or they were you know it, outside outside the capital yes they were not in the capital they were not in the in the capital and actually something that i'm just uh forgetting to mention walking into nairobi west hospital was now my second time actually i had had the first surgery in kakamega and when i had the first surgery i remember uh i remember uh the doctor telling me, go home, you are healed. And then I was like, go home, you are healed. Just like Jesus, go home, you are healed. And then I was like, <laughs> yes. And then I was like, but where is something to show that I'm okay from which script are we reading from? Yeah. Because he didn't even give me anything written like if i walked into another clinic like i walked into nairobi west hospital and they're like you've been treated before so you had the first surgery then what did the doctor diagnose diagnose you with and what was the type of tumor you had so so when when you are the first surgery you had in kakamega why why did you have the surgery what did he tell you did he tell you you also had a tumor then yes now that was the first surgery i had in kakamega because uh the very first time uh uh i received treatment actually we had done the scans and everything and everything so the doctor had to to do the first surgery in kakamega okay okay yeah and then so when he did the surgery he was going there knowing there is a tumor yes and so you believe that okay you're going in there to take the tumor out and and then he tells you go home you're healed so you believe okay you've taken care of this but he does not give you paper guys listen to this when you go into hospital or to see any doctor you have paid for consultation or your insurance has paid you have a right to documentation 
either virtually where you can access it or they give you physically because this is what you use to seek other medical attention or to move a, a, a step forward so now um faith goes to nairobi and this other doctor did not give her any paperwork and she's told the same thing there's a tumor and that's what she thought, thought the doctor had taken care of so now what next after this second revelation now after this second revelation uh we start moving again up and down uh looking now for the best doctor around so i am referred to one doctor wabomba yes. and uh, we start doing the clinics so uh after like around 10 like i remember having 10 uh visits in his clinic and he didn't actually know what to do with me because he was like faith we have to amputate your leg but then again you are too young to lose your leg number two you are too young to be barren so if i subject you to radiotherapy or rather cancer treatment you never bear kids again so what do we do we are confused which type of medication do we use then and then he's like chemotherapy responds like 10 percent to bone cancer oh. the only solution is radiotherapy and radiotherapy will render you barren and when so you are confused you're listening to this alone your sister is back in a, a home are you actually, sitting there with the actually, doctor alone actually uh during uh throughout the session there is no session that my husband never uh accompanied me so i was always with him yes yes so, so now what's so position you and your husband what did you tell the doctor so i tell my husband i am so tired of all this i guess i should just go home and rest and let god do the rest so i get tired like i had moved from one hospital to another consulting a number of oncologists go to this one go to this one go to this one like i was i felt like i had spent all that i had and i had no more to spend so i tell my husband you've done enough like you've swept all your bank accounts because of me and you also have a family to take care of so i was like let's stay home you go to work now and let god do the rest but then along along the way i'm like no I'm, i can't sleep through the pain i'm crying throughout and at, at that time i had a small baby yeah so the baby is crying and i'm crying too So one day my husband tells me, I'm not tired of taking care of you. Let's go and see Dr. Wabomba again and see what we can do. Yeah. So we go back again. Mm. And now this time round, I go with a formed opinion. I tell Dr. Wabomba that it's God who gives kids. And it's God who gives life. So if at all God decided that I'll never bear kids anymore, then so be it. Be it. Because I don't care anymore. All I need is life. Because at the, at, the, at, at the same time, the same God has already blessed me with one child. So I know that all grace belongs to him. So you tell me your way forward, then I'll go by what you say. So he tells me, I'm sending you to Kenyatta to meet a doctor there. And then you decide from what he will tell you. So I go to Kenyatta. I meet a doctor. I've forgotten his name. So I meet the doctor. And the doctor was like, I'm sending you to Mpisha 
to meet uh Dr. So and so the names are forgotten. So I it's trending, yes. It's trending, it's trending. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yes. So I go to Mpisha, then I meet uh the doctors there and the doctors were like Faith, uh have you been told that after this you never bear kids again? Then I'm like, yes, that is why I'm here. I'm ready for anything. Yes. Then they are like, go see a gyna. Let the gyna advise you on how you can harvest your eggs so that in future you don't come running up and down suing us that we didn't tell you all this. 